As the drain cover strikes again, I want to talk about the development restrictions, cost cut restrictions, which the teams have faced since 2021. Now, there's a lot of discussion during the testing day, especially today on the final day of testing, and I just want to say my piece and give my opinion. Now, for me, I really like the idea of the cost cap when it first started. I really like the idea of the development restrictions, like the wind tunnel time, CFD time, restricting the big teams from just chucking money at a problem and fixing it and then being miles ahead. But from what we've seen since the start of the 2021 season and heading into the new regulations is that realistically, all the cost restrictions are doing is stopping teams from catching up. 80% of you are not subscribed. What are you doing? Click that red button. It's completely free. Really helps out the channel. Make sure you like, share and comment your thoughts on this video down below. I'll let you get back to the video. Red Bull, like their gap hasn't got any shorter. They had development restrictions last year, which I thought made no difference anyway. It was never going to make a difference. Let's not act like, uh, what was it? 10%, 7%, whatever it was it's not going to make a big difference when you're already like 20 odd percent, 30 odd, 40 odd percent lower than the team at the back. So for me, it's a bit of a joke. The development restrictions don't really work for me. I just don't get like, I understand, oh, they can do more, they can do more, but they don't have the quality of, they don't have the technology quality that the likes of the top teams have. The top teams are restricted, so they can't catch up the teams ahead. They also have to spend more money to do things so they have less money available for development anyway. So for me, it's just one whole big restriction that does nothing other than benefit the team at the front, which obviously at the moment is Red Bull. Now, for me, I really liked the idea of closing up the grid, but I think these regulations have shown that's not possible. I think the cost cap has shown that's not possible. And these development restrictions have shown that's not possible. Yes, in qualifying trim, we probably have the closest grid ever. And I know people will probably chuck that argument at me in the comments. But for me, it's not its not real. It, it's artificial, right? Last year, we saw Red Bull often get outpaced in qualifying. Like, how many times did we see Charles Leclerc chuck it on pole? Even Lewis Hamilton in the fourth fastest car on the grid chuck that on pole. I think, like, there was a McLaren that on occasion could have got pole position, but bottled it in the final corner, Lando Norris. And it's like, for me, those development restrictions were supposed to make it so your teams like McLaren, Aston Martin, Alpine, Williams, uh, Alpha Tauri, Haas, Alfa Romeo, were spending less money to keep up, but were also able to gain more out of it, which, in my opinion, hasn't happened. Those teams haven't gained more. Your likes of Alfa Romeo and Haas seem to have just gone backwards. Alpine have gone backwards since the development restrictions. Yes, you can talk about the big jump of Alpine, not Alpine, of Aston Martin and McLaren, but realistically, McLaren came in half cuts last season. We knew there was going to make big changes as the season went on. Zach Brown, um, their team principal, and Norris, Piastri, were, were dead blatant about the fact that they were coming in half cuts. They didn't even lie about it. We changed the development programme too late. Yes, so they've not made the jump over the winter. They made the changes over the winter, but too late to make the jump. And then you've got Aston Martin, who obviously made that huge jump. But where have they gone since then? They've made no no further jump. And to be honest with you, this season, they're probably going to be in the same place they were before the start of last season. So it's like, realistically, the development restrictions have done nothing. You've still got red. You've still got your top three teams. But now you've got an even bigger gap between the top and the second team. You've got a bigger gap between your middle teams and your bottom teams. And it's like, at this point, on race pace, we've probably got the biggest field spread we've ever had. Now, yes, you've got a few teams at the top that are quite close. But nobody cares about the battle for third or fifth or tenth place. Nobody cares about that. Yes, it's interesting for... Uh, Williams or Alpha Tauri or whoever chucks it into P10 in P9, what have you, right? But realistically, we're looking at a grid, really, where you've got Red Bull, Ferrari, Mercedes, McLaren and Aston Martin. There's five teams. Your points are sorted. If there's no mistakes, no crashes, your points are sorted. So have the de development restrictions really done anything? For me, absolutely not. Has the cost cap done anything? For me, absolutely not. We, we were told by, I think it was Ross Braun, that if you break the cost cap, 
you'd suffer severe penalties, you'd lose your championships. We saw in 2021 that that isn't the case. Red Bull broke the cost cap financially. I'm not talking about uh, technological errors and um, administration errors like Aston Martin and Williams. I'm talking about overspending. Red Bull did it, whether you believe it's £400,000, whether you believe it's a million pounds or £2.2 .2 million. The words from Ross Brown were, if you break the cap, you lose your championship. They've still got their championship. There's multiple reasons why that championship isn't Red Bull's or Verstappen's, but we don't need to go into them. We just talk about the cost cap. And for me, the cost cap ain't working. The development restrictions ain't working. What are we supposed to do? We're sitting here on the 23rd of February, already knowing that unless there's some major, major reliability issues, Red Bull are walking away with this championship. Whether it ends up being Max or Perez with a driver's championship at the end of the season, who really cares? It's going to be another Red Bull championship all over. It'll obviously be Max. It's not really a discussion to be had. But it's at this point, for me, the development restrictions have run their course and don't work. The cost cap has run its course and don't work. So... What do you think? Let me know down in the comments because for me, I'm starting to get a little bit annoyed with Formula One, the cost cap restrictions and this development. Why are we stopping teams from innovating? We got rid of DAS, we got rid of party modes, we got rid of oil burning. What else have we got rid of? What else are they going to get rid of in the future? They're looking into the legality of the Mercedes front wing because of dirty air wash on, which I think it's a load of bullshit really. It's more to do with if Mercedes are close to Red Bull, we can then deem it illegal and hope that chucks them back a bit. Realistically, that is the case. Now, I'm not a Mercedes fan. I'm not a McLaren fan. I'm not a Ferrari fan. I'm a Lewis Hamilton fan. I go where he goes. So next year, you'll probably see me in a Ferrari cap. But I just can't, I just don't understand the development restrictions. For me, it just ain't working. The cost cap isn't working. If you ain't going to bridge the gap to the front, then what's the point of having a close midfield? Because you've still got a car 20, 30 seconds up the road. And even Perez on a bad day could get himself 10 seconds up the road. But his bad days can be really, really bad. I'm not disputing that, but that's not the point here. The point is, if you put a competent driver in that second Red Bull, they're getting a 1-2 by 20, 30 seconds. Let's, let's be brutal. It's Mercedes of 2014, 2015. And like, for me... We don't want that. That was the whole point of these new restrictions, these new regulations, was to stop that happening. It was to stop domination. But all we seem to be doing is encouraging it and pushing it. And you've got F1 pundits saying that we should be impressed with what Red Bull are doing. But I'm not. Because when it was Mercedes, it was a completely different story. Like previously, when it was Ferrari, it was a different story. It's never. It's not consistent. Mercedes were battered for being dominant. Lewis Hamilton was battered for being dominant, but at least they had two competitive cars up the front. I think I think it's something like three out of the past ten seasons have gone right down to the wire, right? And don't get me wrong, there's I think there's three others where Ferrari have been in with a shot of the championship till about five races before the end when Lewis Hamilton and Mercedes turned it on. But I'm just fed up of talking about development restrictions and cost cap restrictions because at the end of the day they aren't working. And I just don't I just don't see the point of it anymore. I think for me it's time for change. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hopefully I'll have a review for testing out later today. I'm going out this evening, so if testing isn't done at the time it's usually done because of this drain cover red flag, it will be out on Saturday. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. Let me know your thoughts in the comments about the cost cap restrictions, development restrictions. Do you think they're working? Do you think they're right? For me, I think we can gather the answer is no. But thank you for watching. I'll catch you in my next video. Make sure to go and find me on TikTok, pictured here, and Twitter, pictured here. These are the places where I'll keep you all up to date with all my upcoming videos and my thoughts and feelings around the Formula One and football weekend.